Hello everyone. So this is Time to Talk Hop. This is Fayhune and my lovely co-host who is Vanessa Fisher. We are on episode three, which is amazing. So thank you for everyone listening to the last one with the anxious fireman and with Kelsey Bartlett. I said it right? Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and this time we are going to be talking about friendship, which is because last week it was friendship week. I mean, I think every week's friendship week for me. But yeah. So we want you to discuss it further, mainly with Vanessa being with her best friend now. And yeah, just... Come on, take it away, Vanessa. What do you think about friendship? Yeah, so I quite like the idea that it was National Best Friends Day and, you know, and kind of did a little bit of a push out on social media um, and all the channels for the hub and, and kind of asked people to uh, present um, a, a nice message or a thought or something to your best friend or even it doesn't necessarily have to be a best friend I think sometimes having that title best friend in itself can make other friends feel a little bit pushed out so I like to say that I've got lots of best friends they're all my bestest of friends um but yeah so it, it really fed into the hub really well this week because um, I've talked a lot about the focus of having a good support network around you when you are looking to to go into recovery um, and and even just if you you know just your every day I think it doesn't even need to be tied into mental health but just you know having that support network on on any days that you're feeling down or if you want to share some good news I think um, it really does kind of make us feel like we've we've got that that safety net and we've got people who are there to to be you know to cheer us on and support us and and encourage us to to keep striving to have the best life that we can have no i agree mainly when um when i ask my friends which will put it did you get any of the voice notes by the way from your friends i've got them coming in Yes, me too. And it was, do you know what? It was such a lovely thing because I literally just sent a message to my friends saying, um, what does friendship mean to you? If you could just give us like a short voice note. And they sent them in. I'm not even joking you. When you're having a bit of a shitty day at work, when you listen to that, I was like, oh, it just yeah. proper warms you. And my friends literally said, um, it's, it's, you are a safety net. You can laugh, you can cry, you can, you can do everything together. You, uh, what did one of my friends say? Well, you're going to hear it anyway, but she went to you and it's like another part of you. And I was like, that's... Oh, so I know. What, <laughs> I love these yeah. all day. <laughs> so lovely. Yeah. No, I agree. Did you get any comments on the things that you put online? Yeah, I mean, I had, I mean, I, I, I always find it a little bit kind of, I find it as a, and this is something that I'm working on for myself, is I do find any compliments quite kind of I just I go a bit awkward and and a bit kind of like oh I don't know what to do and 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 so I I've been practicing my response which is thank you that's very kind of you to say <laughs> so because if yeah I'm not I'm not I can I'll give them out I'm just yeah I find it a little bit hard to to sort of have them come my way but I did and it was lovely and um, you know, and we, I had a few people saying that their best friend or the person that they couldn't live without was their partner or their boyfriend, their girlfriend or their, um, their mum, their dad. And, and, and I think it, in lockdown especially, I think people have really solidified some relationships with their friends and it's kind of taken us away from meeting people in busy areas and busy things and actually you know messaging and, and asking somebody and stopping and having that time to say how are you today and that's something that we forget to to sort of focus on because we're so busy we start you know we up until the lockdown we were living such a busy life and you know I don't remember many people sort of they, they, you'll go hey yeah how are you yeah yeah good fine okay bye but you've not do you ever actually stop and actually listen and and say, um, you know, how are you today? And and listen to that person's response. Um, and I think sometimes that can also be the the, the difference between realizing your friend's not okay. You know, uh, and sometimes, especially, you know, sort of 
whether they have already got bad mental health or whether they, um, you know, sort of have just having a bad day. I'm very much a I'm fine warrior. So even if I'm having a bad day, I'll go, I'm fine. Yep, yep, fine. Um, but I've actually got you, I've got more in tune at listening to people's responses. <clears throat> and very often you can tell that in that fine, it's they're not okay. And that's when you can kind of be there more as a friend. Do you know what I found as well since COVID? A, a lot of my friends who I, they used to be the I'm fine people have been way more honest and been like, so when I, I have been doing like the check-ins because, you know, it, it'd be like when I'd see them normally and they've been really honest and been like, no, I'm not okay. Or I am having a bit of a down day or I'm taking a day for myself. And I've been so proud of them to say that. Cause I'm like, yes, I'm glad that you're saying that. And I hope it's not just a COVID thing. I'm hoping that it doesn't just end then. And something you said then about um, being in a, we always went crowded places. I got into the bad habit of every time I saw my friends, I don't know if it's because I was going back home to Stoke I'm in Manchester, and I'd be like, let's go out, let's go for a meal, let's do this, let's do that, and actually make a really big, a really big thing out of it. Like it was never just a let's just sit and chill. It was never that. It was always we've got to make every second count. Now, because we've all had that many video calls of just staring at each other on the sofa and then. <laughs> it it shows that you can do it in real life you don't need I mean of course we all can't wait to get out and have fun but it shows that we can take that step back and just sit down watch a film together or just chat or stare at a wall if you want to but you just enjoy each other's company you don't need to do that big I've got to go and do a million things to prove that we're the bestest friends and having the best time absolutely um you know and I think it's important for me, um, you know, and this is my opinion, obviously, I'm not trying to say to everybody that they, this is something that they should be practicing, but I think definitely, you know, sort of having that, that mindfulness on, on, on your friendships and, and having just a, 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 a friend catch up where it's in a quieter space and you're all really relaxed there's you know you can have a couple of glasses of wine but you're not all sort of on a night out and it's loud and you can actually in that moment really kind of connect and understand and 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 see how your friend is doing and I think when you go out and you're having a couple of drinks and it's a laugh and there's music and whatever you it you it's very easy to put a skin on and I think um you know if when you're in that sort of more sort of sort of peaceful setting it does allow you to sort of start to see that person for you know for how they really are and I think that sometimes can be a really important tool to have um you know and it's I'm very much one about um you know sort of having those moments I very much believe in living in the moments um because obviously you know my philosophy is is that you can't change what's already happened and you you can't predict what's going to happen all you have is this day this moment this hour um and when you kind of find that and I actually remember a counsellor saying this to me she said when you find the ability to be in the moments she said you'll find this peacefulness she said because you can just focus on what you have control at um and so I try and kind of bring that into my friendships as well and make sure that I have those sort of quieter moments with my friends and keep checking in and and sort of just you know having that different level of of sort of conversation rather than it being mad and and sort of you know and don't get me wrong like you know everybody loves to go out and have a laugh and stuff but I don't I think there's a time and a place for genuine conversations yeah I definitely agree do you know it's funny that you've just said that because when I did a little bit of research on friendship it says here that it's been proven that having friendship triggers empathy so it says here so they actually studies the brains of like 20 different people um, and we've given them electric shocks. Um, a friend of someone, it would actually initiate like empathy to have for that person because of them, them getting pain. So it's been proven that that is exactly what you've just said. And it's, it's yeah. beautiful. I do sometimes think, you know that saying, you can pick, you can't pick your family, but you can pick your friends. 
And I do believe that. I do like, and you, I do sometimes think like me and my mum say it, um, like you can love your friends on the same level as your family, sometimes a little bit more. I think so. Yeah. And it kind of that kind of feeds nicely into like the conversation because, you know, there will be people listening to this that, you know, might feel that um, for whatever reason they are, they haven't got healthy relationships with their family. Um, and, but they have a family within their friends. And, and that really was, you know, it, it's quite important for me. I mean, I very much sort of have a, family of friends and um you know and a bit rebuilt um relationships with with my family but um I I do believe I don't I don't I don't agree with the saying the blood is thicker than water I think that if you, even if you're not blood related they can still mean as much if not more oh god I completely agree because <laughs> That, that, yeah because my like that and also that is true with families because like my stepdad mm -hmm. is is now even though he's not been in my life for a long long time I see him as my dad and I'd rather have his so-called water than have my dad's blood do you know what I mean because and step <laughs> and people class their like stepsisters and stepbrothers and and uh, godparents they say auntie might not be blood but god do they mean something so no I completely agree that friendships and some people don't have families so when people say that I also yeah I feel like it's a very um some people might disagree but I feel like that's a bit of a an old saying for in the days when friends weren't as important when family was like you 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 yeah. friends and the Romeo and Juliet's of the day yeah yes <laughs> and the other thing we, I think we should also make people clear of is you don't need to have a other because look, looking at one of my things here saying is friends were limited back in the day they're not now because of Facebook and stuff but I just want to let people know that some people get upset by only having one friend they'll be mm. like well oh, I've only got one friend and I'm thinking, so what? Your mm. one friend could mean more than that person who's got 20 million. Do you know what mm. I mean? I just want people to know that that one friend, even if it's one, that friend will mean the will to you. That, that, that's because like your sister and brother. So, because people get really upset when they're like, oh, I can't, I can't go out with a big group of friends or I can't talk to loads of friends I've only got the one. Darling, do not worry. It's still a beautiful friendship. I think this is the thing as well, you know, and I think for me, I learned a really valuable lesson when I went into hospital um, and I know a lot of people. I'm acquainted with a lot of people, um, but my true friends are a very small group of people. And, you know, I think people sometimes can get um, sort of sold on this idea that the more people that know of you or or that you talk to or, you know, Facebook and social media is one of these where it kind of paints an unrealistic picture of what somebody's life really is. Um, there is a big difference between an acquaintance, which is somebody who you may see go out for a couple of drinks or even maybe only see once or twice a year, there's a very big difference to that kind of relationship to a friendship. Um, and, and, you know, and I say this very often, I have a lot of friends from varying ages. So, um, you know, I, I like to think it keeps me down with the kids. Um, but, uh, you know, and I often say to them that, you know, what people don't realize is that a friendship is as is just as important as a relationship it's just a different type of relationship and in order to keep that friendship sort of growing and 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 connected you have to put the time into that and um you know and if you're not willing to put the time into that friendship it will eventually sort of become distant just like any relationship in your in your um, in your in your life so you know be careful how many pots you're trying to put gold into because it could it, you know it, it eventually you will find that you're the one that's up with nothing you know sometimes it's it's actually more healthy to have one or two friends that you know without a doubt would be there for you no matter what and put your energy into those relationships and those friendships and and, and I'm not saying obviously cut people out of your life but you know just 
be aware of the ones that would be there for you and you for them uh, and the people that are just happy to kind of know you but not initially support you or encourage you or to 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 be there to see you make the best of your life yeah I no, completely completely agree I absolutely love the sayings that you come out with you know Vanessa <laughs> that, honestly when you said be careful how much gold you put in your pot so I was like the stuff you come out with I absolutely <laughs> love it <laughs> I'm so gonna be saying that now I think it's amazing <laughs> I, the only thing that I would say about that as well is with COVID, because some people haven't been coping, some people might not have reached out. So if they were close friends before COVID, don't think that they are lost. They might have been only coping in their own way. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna be honest, I would be a little, I'm lucky because all my friends have spoken, we, we've, we've always talked and I, say, I bet you're the same. But I know that some people might have struggled and might have gone into a little hole and just been like, that was their way of coping and didn't message you. That, they are still your friends. Maybe try them. Okay, they might be your dicks. And they might not want to be your friends. I'm not saying they are. But yeah. they have actually been coping in their own way. And that was their way of coping with whatever we were going through. Because COVID, no one knows how to cope with it. So it's kind of a weird, it, it's such a weird time. I, don't, I, I couldn't give any advice. All I'd say is if they were true friends before, maybe check in on them. And be yeah. like, why are they acting a bit odd? Why have they suddenly dropped me? I 100% agree. Um, I think we might have to edit that because I'm sure I've just snorted up the uh, on the podcast. But um... <laughs> I don't think we're definitely keeping this in now. <laughs> uh, I can't even blame Teddy. He's not in the room. Um, but yeah, no, my friends do know that my tendency, if I'm having a bad day, and and then you know, and I'm still very much working every day on my own uh, mental health and keeping that sort of in a good place. Um, but if I have a particularly emotional day or particularly bad time, I am, I very much, and I know, and I'm aware of the fact that I do withdraw. I withdraw from everything and everyone. And um, I will tend to just kind of go ghost on them for a few days, but they understand that. And I think that's what's important. I think if, you know, you have a friend who, suddenly starts to do these things then you would be having the conversation as well I am a bit concerned it's out of your character could they be developing especially we've seen such a big increase of people um who wouldn't normally say that they were struggling with their mental health um but the lockdown the the isolation I mean there's a reason why isolation is used as a punishment um in corporate prisons and 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 things you know it is extremely difficult so you know um if it's out of character you know make sure you touch you touch in base um you know this is where the traffic light system can come into play um you know ask even if they don't want to talk to you if they just sort of send you a, a text emoji or whatever to say you know it can be modified to something for you and your friend um or family member um if you know sort of this is something that your friend's quite prone to doing you know my friends now know that I will eventually kind of message and say oh I'm sorry I, I went down the rabbit hole and that's my favorite saying disappeared down the rabbit hole like Alice in Wonderland because it does sometimes feel like you've disappeared into Wonderland um what were you saying lovely I was just gonna say you've, you've done it with me once I was like I was like she's gone off the radar I don't know what's happened and then you just came back I literally thought you were like Alice I was like <laughs> I was just about, it was it was it's obviously scary as a, as a friend but at the same time it's mm -hmm. understandable the funny thing is Vanessa I'd literally wrote down on here how friends can help in a crisis of when you're low so I thought call text meet up let them stay over for a while and I'd literally put quote as previously discussed with Vanessa give them your crisis help sheet recovery plan because you, mm -hmm. you give that out don't you to certain yeah. friends so just in case yeah. and then I finally put be honest be open and ask how they might be able how and then we sorry dyslexia here how they are as they might be in a similar situation so you can actually see each other's different sides but no your I feel like your traffic light is is a really really good idea because who isn't on the phones these days I just think it's so simple and easy to do 
Well, this is it. And, you know, and if you, um, if you, you know, I'm hoping and, you know, that the more people that listen to the podcast and they might, you know, sort of want to find out a bit more about what we're doing at the hub and, um, and, you know, the more people that we can reach out to try and work on that crisis plan and that having that safety net and talking about the traffic light system and getting them to discuss it with their support network. I just think that we'll start to build the spider web where people are not going to be falling through the cracks and, you know, people don't feel there's alone and, and, and slowly, you know, people will sort of become more aware that they are in control. Um, you know, you just need to, to have the tools and we have the tools that we want to give these people to start controlling and managing and having the life that they've always wanted. I mean, what's it all going to be like when we actually see our friends? It's going to be... Oh, I know. It's going to be like, we're going to go back all to hippies and just all be loving <laughs> each other and give each other hugs and be like, don't believe me, man. <laughs> I know I don't will be. <laughs> Peace to the world, because that's what we need now. But it's going to be, it is going to be beautiful. And yeah. I'm hoping that it's going to bring everyone together mm-hmm. in the standard, because I feel like everyone... However much someone goes, oh no, but I don't, I haven't felt lonely, or I haven't felt a bit shitty, or I haven't felt this. I feel like everyone through COVID has at least felt it a little bit now. Yeah. So I feel like everyone now should be able to understand mental health, or mm-hmm. loneliness, or needing someone. I feel like everyone's had just a little bit of a tinge of it, even if they don't feel much or they just don't don't understand it. I feel like they must have gone, ah, oh, do you know what? I think I might understand how Vanessa's feeling now or Faye's feeling now with someone. It's it's, it's gonna be beautiful. Well, I'm hoping so anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, and I mean, obviously, we, you know, I'd like to also mention, you know, they have, we've lost a lot of people um, within the virus and, you know, and there are a lot of families that are going through sort of their own uh, grief and, um, you know, and, and, you know, I, I, I send my utmost love and respect to those people. You know, there are a lot of people that have lost loved ones to mental health in this crisis um you know and and again it you know I kind of almost feel that um <laughs> for every story I hear um I it, it's one less person I wasn't able to reach in time and just because they have your responsibility yeah I do and I kind of I just I think as a personal testimony you know obviously because I started this on my own journey of my own suicide attempt and 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 I genuinely can understand and, and know how they felt at that point and and how I am just really really striving to to really make a difference um and it's not uh, you know, money, it's not about that. It's not about, you know, getting corporate funding or anything at the moment. It's it's about just getting out to the people that need it, that they aren't alone. And there is, you know, there is a, a sort of a, a network of people out there to help them. And that, you know, the reason I started the hub was to make sure that they knew where those people were and help them get the help and support that they need. And so, yeah, I mean, I think... If at any point, you know, and we'll put, we will put all the details up at the end of the podcast, but if you're worried about anybody in, in your life or, you know, especially, you know, your friends, um, family, you know, it's really important to, to reach out, get educated, understand and know how you can support them. I'm really glad you said that. Because, yeah, that's the main thing that we are going to put all on here. And just let everyone know that there is help out there. And like that's the whole aim of what you're making, Vanessa, is it's not even just the main places like mine. There is so many little places in every single city, in every single town, there is something. Even businesses, even businesses have their own person that can help. Like you might not have it on your forehead, like I can help, but you can. So I mean, I've not really got anything else to say after that, really. <laughs> no, it, it was kind of an end, an end of combos sort of <laughs> full stop. <laughs> well, let's, let's not end on it like that, though. Let's end on thank you, everyone, for listening. Please tune in for episode four. Crazy. <laughs> oh, with um, hopefully we'll have our one of our wonderful guest speakers. 
um, yeah. on and uh, be able to talk a little bit more about you know mental health for them and um, I'm not going to divulge who our guest speakers are going to be I think it'd be a nice surprise uh, we have got a couple of little ace cards up my sleeve so watch the space the contacts that Vanessa has sometimes even I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> anyway thank you everyone for listening and everyone stay safe look after your friends and look after yourselves yes Bye.